Pretty rough day ahead for firefighters battling a ferocious wildfire in Nevada. High winds are expected to fuel the flames that are already moving dangerously fast. Seven homes have been destroyed. More than 100 are threatened. Firefighters are attacking the flames from the ground as well as the air. You can see those dramatic pictures. Rain and cooler temperatures could bring them at least some relief on Friday. So for the past year and a half, while we're high and dry on land, a handful of world records were being smashed at sea. This is the weirdest looking boat you'll probably ever see on the water. But it took a crew around the world literally the long way. And there's not a drop of fuel on board. All solar power. Chad Myers is here to explain this kind of amazing awesome. boat and <laughs> how they did this and whether or not it's going to become the future. Every uh, tell, time, us, tell us what we know about this. It's pretty cool stuff. <laughs> Every time this boat came into port, people were flocking to it. So what could that possibly be? Because <laughs> it certainly doesn't look like a boat. It looks like uh, something out of a sci-fi movie. Is sir, it is Star Trek. It is the Enterprise. <laughs> There's no question. It's something like that. It's a catamaran, the two, two pods on the side keeping the, the boat up. But it has solar panels the size of two tennis courts on top. This thing could only go five miles per hour, not five knots, six miles per hour, somewhere in there. But so it was a That's slow boat to slow China. There. It was over <laughs> 500 days to go around the world. But he said that when he was sitting on his, his dad's lap and he, Phineas Fall going around the world in 80 days, he knew that someday he had to go around the world. That, that was his lifelong dream. 40-year-old guy builds this boat, $16 million to build this boat. Goes around the world all the way. Leaves Monaco, goes out through Gibraltar, across the Atlantic, through the Panama Canal, across the Pacific, has to wait four days in, in Australia because it never was sunny for That's almost an entire week. That's what I was going to ask. Does it matter if the sun is shining? It has enough power in the batteries to go for five days without sun. But they okay. had more than five days, and the boat was literally dead <laughs> in the water. There. It was just sitting there. Thank goodness it wasn't getting pounded by 100-mile-per-hour winds. You know, they'll be up on a reef or something. Uh, but they got, they got going again. They made it through the Suez Canal and back to Monaco where they landed. Is this the future, Chad? We're never going to move oil in an oil, <laughs> oil cargo, a, a tanker, it's just too heavy. Uh, you're not going to get that kind of energy. If you only get this very, this is a $16 million, the lightest boat they could possibly build, and it can only go six miles per hour. You can't really move a lot. You can't jet ski. You can't, you can't water ski behind it. You know, maybe so, you could so do what's, it too. What's, uh, what's the advantage besides proving that we can do this with solar power? Would yeah. it actually become you know, practical in any way with the... You know, the, the mega rich can do what they want. You know, I, you know I'm, a, I'm a sailor. I love wind power. And the jokes on our CNN.com blog are, so what's next? A wind-powered boat? Yeah, we've had those for centuries. They're, it's their sailboat. Uh, I, I think this, he just wanted to prove, and the whole crew wanted to prove it, it could be done. Why did you climb Mount Everest? Because it was there. Why did you go around the world in a, in a, in a solar-powered boat? Because we could. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. And, and we might be, get back to that guy who's climbing Mount Everest too tomorrow. Good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. Egyptians sounding off on our open mic about voting in their first presidential election ever. That next.